Hello everyone. Welcome to the class. So, let us start our class on Java. Let us have some introductory information. What is Java? Java is a object-oriented programming language, often called as OOP. OOP stands for Object-Oriented Programming. BlueJ. BlueJ is a Windows-based editor that we will be using in order to do the Java programs. Objects. What are objects? Objects are the real-life entity which has some characteristics, behaviors. The state of an object is represented through values or attributes of its characteristics at a given point of time. Now, what is class? So, class is a blueprint or a prototype that defines the variables and methods common to all objects of a certain kind. Class is also referred to as an object factory as it is the class from which we create objects and it contains all the necessary informations that are required to create the objects. Now let us go into details regarding objects. Suppose we are considering a class called fruit, then a real life entity of the fruit class can be an orange which is in our case is an object. So the characteristics of this object orange can be it is spherical in shape then its color is orange and it is citrus in nature it is sweet and sour in taste and so on. Now let us consider methods. So let us consider another example of a car called Audi Q3. This car object has many characteristics like it could be colors, how many gears it is having, what is the power, length, etc. Then let us say that the color attribute has a value panther black which is stored in the color attribute. So these descriptions are simply incomplete because an object has much more than its attributes. It is indeed more than just the values or the records of the values. It also knows what it can do. That is what type of associated behavior is also present. These behaviors of an object is described through the associated function called method such as the methods of this object RDQ3 could be ignition, acceleration, changing gears, blowing of horns, etc. Next, what are tokens? The smallest individual part of a program is called as tokens. Java, there are five tokens available keywords, identifiers, literals, punctuators, and operators. Keywords. So keywords are the reserved words that have some special meanings to the language compilers. There are at present 51 keywords such as go to, void, etc. You can refer to any textbooks for the keywords. And I also want all of you not only to go through this video but also go through and textbook so that you will have a complete information. That's why intentionally I have not given the keyword so that you will go through the book in order to gain some additional information. This video just is I will be discussing some basic things. Next is identifiers. What are identifiers? Identifiers are fundamental building blocks of a program that are often referred to as the names which will be given to the variables, objects, classes, functions, etc. Next is, let us consider some of the rules for forming identify rules. It can have alphabets, digits and underscore as well as the dollar sign. There must not be a keyword, boolean literal 
or a null literal they must not begin with a digit java is a case sensitive language and hence upper case characters and lower case characters are treated differently so let us have some examples of valid identifiers such as these are the valid identifiers now let us go through some invalid identifiers so you see the first invalid identifier to show why this is invalid because we have discussed in the rules that it must not begin with a digit next what is the reason for this so you can see that it is having a special symbol hyphen which is not accepted and in the same manner here we are having dot these are some special symbols that are not accepted whereas dollar sign is accepted here okay now let us talk about literals literals are also referred to as constants they are the data items that are having fixed data values there are various kinds of literals available in java integer literals floating literals boolean literals character literals string literals and null literals now let us have some information regarding escape sequence okay so java allows us to have certain non graphic characters constants these non graphic character constants are those that cannot be typed directly from the keyboard such as tabs new lines so these non graphic characters are represented by using escape sequence which is your backslash followed by one or two characters so let us see what are some available escape sequence such as backslash n which refers to new line backslash t for a horizontal tab backslash v for vertical tab backslash 0 for null and many more are also there now let us have some information regarding data types data types are means to identify what type of data and associate operations of handling it java there are primarily two types of data one is primitive data type and other one is reference data type reference data type we will not be going into details now for now we will concentrate on the primitive data types primitive data types are further classified into four types they are integers which are basically used for storing whole numbers next is floating point which are used for storing real numbers or decimal numbers then there is characters which we can store alphabet digits or symbols but only one character at a time finally we are having boolean which is a special type it has having only two values true or false now let us go into further details so integer is further classified into four types they are byte short int long floating point is of two types float and double character is only one type char and boolean is also of one type that is special type used for representing true or false value so in this table it has shown what is the available size of these types of data next is string so you may have a question that what is string then string isn't a data type no string is not a data type rather string is a inbuilt class in java's library every string that we create is actually an object of the string type even the string constants are also string objects string type values are represented within double quote and character type value are represented within single quote 
Now variable. What a variable? A variable is a basic unit of storage in Java program. A variable is defined by the combination of its type. Then identifier. What is identifier? Just now we had the information that identifier refers to the naming conventions. So combination variable is a combination of type identifier and you may or may not have a initializer. Initializer here means the initial value. So let us see the two basic form of variable declaration. First is type and identifier. Example, I am mentioning the type as int and the identifier is salary. Another could be type identifier and the optional initializer. Here I have mentioned the initializer such as salary equals to I have given a value here. In the same way I have assigned a string value. As you can see string value is enclosed within double quotation. Now one thing to keep in mind is that we have to declare the variable first before we can actually use it. You may have actually used these variables only after you declare them. Now let us go through a sample program. So it is told us that we have to Take input your name, class, section and roll number and we have to display them. So let us begin. So first we have to give the keyword here class. Then we have to specify a name of the class. In this example we have given the class name as example1. Then we have to give a second bracket. After that, we will write a function. Here, public void display. So, this public is an access specifier, void is the return type, and display is the name of the function. And within the bracket are the parameter list. We will go into these details in some other time. For now, you just think of this statement as an input statement where you have taken four inputs. First is string type input with the variable na to store your name. Then integer type input, int type input which is cl which is used to store the class. Then sec for storing the section and finally role to store the role number. Then again the second bracket opens. Now what is the program we are told that we have to just simply display all these details. So, in order to display the details in Java, the statement is system.out.println or another function is also there, it is system.out.print. So, the basic difference between print ln and print we will just discuss. So, let us see. So, first we have displayed the name and within the double quotation I am mentioning a message name then I am giving a colon after that I am giving a plus and then I am mentioning my variable where my name is stored. So here the plus is not going to add up these two rather here the plus symbol is acting as a concatenation operator. Concatenation means merging. What it is merging? It is merging this string constant name colon with this string value that is stored in this variable that I will provide as input. So what this plus operator is doing? It is a concatenation operator that is merging this string constant with this value that is stored in this variable. So here I have used the print ln statement. And here I am using the print statement class. Then I am mentioning the class. Then you can see here that I am using the escape sequence operator that is s backslash t. What is the use of it? The use of backslash t is to give a horizontal tab. And then again I have used here backslash n. 
which is for new line. So let us see what the output will be. So while I run this program, I have given these value in the variables. So here I have given my name in the variable na, I have given 8 in the class, in the section I have given f and roll number I have given the value 7. Now if I run this program with this value, the output will look like this one. So, what is the basic difference between print and println statement? Both the print and println statement does the same thing. It displays the value that is the message along with the variable's value. But what is the difference? The difference is that println statement after executing that, the cursor shift to the next line. So, see here what I have given. I have given the message name, then colon, and then I have given the variable which will show me the value that is stored in this variable. So it is done here exactly name colon and my name that I have given as input is being displayed. So this println statement what it does after it encounters this semicolon, the cursor will shift to the next line. Okay, that is the basic difference. Println statement after executing it, the cursor shifts to the next line. Okay, now see what happens here. Class, then I have mentioned the class that I have stored here. So it is being printed class, and as I have given the value here 8, so 8 is stored. Now see a gap has been given here. So this backslash t acts as a horizontal tab. So that's why. A tab space is given after which the word section is coming. Then the value that is stored in the section variable that is being displayed. And again, you see I have given another escape sequence here that is backslash n. What is the purpose of backslash n? Backslash n acts as a new line operator. So, what happens before this message gets printed? The Cursor shifts to the next line, then only this message and the value is printed. Okay, so this is the basic difference between print and println. So, hope you have understood the program. So, see you soon in the next class. Bye bye.